Hi, my name is Jean Fassler. My pronouns are they, them. And my piece that's in the East German Playwriting Festival is Their Wolves. If your play were an August Wolves of the Fellowship of Wolves, what would it be? Hmm. This is very, very specific. But one of those plastic banana covers that, that are shaped like a banana and are yellow plastic, and it's just like you open it and put a banana in it. What is the worst thing you've ever written? Morally, probably an aggressive letter to my mother when I was like 13. Um, but from an objective standpoint, I wrote a lot of bad poetry for a really long time. I still do it, but it's less bad now. Um, what's the best thing you've ever written? Ooh. I'd like to think that some things in the, like, the, the, the snippet of their wolves that I sent in is not the full piece. The full piece is actually unfinished, but what I have in it, there's a monologue that I wrote that I'm a really big fan of. Um, not in the actual piece that's being performed now, but in the overall piece. I also had a very strange conversation with a guy who was giving me a COVID test once, and it made a pretty good poem. What was the poem for that? It was just, it was literally just dialogue of the conversation that we had, but it was about, it, like, it, the guy asked me who I was, and I thought that he just meant my like name, and then he went on like a very deep tangent about like identity and who people are and all of this stuff, and it just kind of, it was a very weird and interesting conversation. How long did it last? Uh, three minutes, four minutes, the length of my COVID test. Um, what do you write about? Do you write about other people's hair or your own? I tend to write about me, just because you know, I live here, and there's, there's there's stuff going on, I think. And I think that it's hard to find a difference between other people's damage and your own damage when you're living as yourself, because it's all going to add up to something, and it's all going to be interconnected. And so I try not to write about damage, more creation. And so what I write about mostly is identity and finding a place to be yourself and growing into someone new. I love that. Well, thank you. My play is literally about werewolves. It's not like, <laughs> not far off. Belle walks through the door of the house shown in the first scene. Inside, Patricia is setting down a yoga mat while Luna and James stand on their own mats. Belle, glad you could make it. We're just about to start. There's an extra mat in the closet. Ah, lucky you. You get a Patricia yoga session without having to pay for it. James, I only made you pay for it once, and that was because Bethany was right behind you. She'd have thrown a fit if she thought there was the tiniest bit of a deal she wasn't getting. Right. Snotty yoga ladies are the worst. Watch it. That's Patricia you're talking about there. Sorry, Mom. Next time you're going to your room. All right, now that everyone's ready, we're going to start standing at the top of our mat's mountain pose just to focus in on today's practice. Let everything else melt away for the moment. There's a comfortable silence as everyone takes a, a few deep breaths. James is very distracted. On the next exhale, take your arms to the floor for forward fold. Bend your knees if you need to. Just make sure you've got a good stretch going. On the inhale, halfway lift, then take it back to the floor for three breaths. It takes James a second to do this. You all right there, dude? Mm hmm Oh, yeah, sorry. I met with my boss earlier. When you're ready, plant your hands on the ground. Step your feet back for plant pose. And how did that go? Fine. Hold this pose for three, two. On the next exhale, down to the floor. Tuck your arms under forehead to the floor. They want to promote me. What? Push up to Cobra, hold, and back down. Push up to Cobra again. They want to promote me? That's, that's great, James. Congrats. That's wonderful news. Push back up to plank, then sink back down into downward dog. You don't seem happy about that. Yeah, well, Luna, I'm tired, all right? Sorry for not jumping out of my skin. On the next exhale, lift your right leg for three-legged dog. Pretty sure I only have two legs, Pat. Belle laughs. They are already struggling to keep balance, and it does not help to that effect, even though it's only a pity laugh. They continue to struggle with balance wherever balance is required. 
On the next exhale, bring your right leg to your left elbow. Refrain from any more terrible wearable adjacent jokes while we attempt to dial in. Okay, but why aren't you excited about it? Isn't that a good thing? Kick your right leg up again. We're gonna repeat this three times. That's one. I can't take it, not without telling them. That's two. Why not? It's a big promotion. What does that have to do with telling them you're a werewolf? I can't. That's three, lower your right leg and we're gonna do the same thing on the left side. I'm tired, okay? I'm tired of lying. I want to tell them. You want to put the rest of us in danger for money. How is telling them about me endangering you? It's my goddamn life. I don't want to have to lie anymore. Just because you're comfortable living with giant walls up doesn't mean the rest of us are. James, Luna. No, go ahead, James. See if anyone at your goddamn job can crunch the numbers on this one. If James is a werewolf, then the only other people he hangs out with or mentions must also be werewolves. It's not a far leap. We're not collateral damage, you asshole. Charlie's barely 16. You're gonna haunt them for the rest of their life with this one stupid decision. You don't think sometimes. It honestly shocks me they even wanna promote you in the first place. Real mature of you to drag Charlie into this like it'll affect them. Like they're your little war propaganda. Oh, think of the children. Don't you think I already have? It's my job to calculate risk. It's all I ever think about anymore. I don't see why your personal fears should keep me from achieving what I want. If there's fallout, there's fallout. I'd rather fight than wait and drown in the middle level. I want to do important things. I can't accomplish anything if I turn down the chance to do it. Can you handle the fact that some things aren't about you? What if it breaks bad, huh? What if it all goes wrong? This will be about me then, because not only are you going to put yourself in danger, when your feelings are hurt, you're going to come to us. Because who else do you have? You claim that this is just about you, but it becomes all of our problems once it blows up in your face. Don't come crawling back to me when you lose everything. Right. It's angrily slamming the door. Right. Because of all people, I'd go to the one who's the most scared of herself. That'll work out great for me. James. Don't try it, Pat. I don't want anyone to talk me off of this ledge. You all know how I feel about this. I'm not changing my mind. He exits in the opposite direction of Luna. Belle and Patricia are left on stage in the type of silence that only exists after watching two people fight. Patricia begins rolling up her yoga mat, a numb look on her face. Belle begins rolling up their mat as well. They are sweeping up the wreckage of the fight, even if nothing tangible has broken. What did James mean by... You all know how I feel about this. Is telling people something you've discussed before? Yes, not at length and not like this. He and Luna have always been hot-headed though. I'm sure their bark will be worse than their bite. Does it weigh on you? Hmm? Keeping your identity a secret. I mean, you live a normal life. Do you ever think about telling people? I used to, back when I was younger and hoping to get married and have kids. I got lucky with Charlie. You know, it was after a while after I'd given up on trying to find love because every time I'd find a partner, I'd just be too scared to tell them. I don't even know if I can have kids, but I've always wanted to be a parent. I did give my contact info to the local adoption agencies and fostering programs. For a long time, they didn't contact me, but one day they called me out about a particularly difficult seven-year-old. The lady on the other end of the phone told me that the kid ran away once a month and tried to bite their classmates, and I, I just knew. I fostered them for a while, but it was clear that this was my kid. The universe works in funny ways sometimes. They're the only one who's legally my kid of the whole group. James and Luna, they act like my kids, but I can't always be their mom. You know, I knew Will growing up, he was a friend of my mom's. The werewolf gene's big in my family, so I got lucky, but I moved cross country to go to college and Will was the only one out here who I knew who was safe to be around. He's the most important werewolf in the state, probably. Most werewolves live alone forever in hiding. Will was smart enough to build a pack. He found James, similar to the way James found you, but Luna actually found me. She knew Will's name and she was smart enough to research him and ended up finding me. 
showed up to my yoga studio one day, took classes for a month, and then asked if she could move in with me. And our little pack came together. It's strange how the universe pulls people together, like gravity, you know, for me, as long as I have them. I don't need to tell everyone else that I'm a werewolf. I don't think it would rock my world as much as it would James or Luna's. They've both always been very passionate about it. What about Charlie or Will? Charlie's life is theirs to live. That's always how it is. If they want to tell people, they can. I'm in their corner no matter what. That's my job, you know, to be there. Will, Will's had a long life. I think he just wants to be there for us at this point, honestly. I think he'd be content to fish for the rest of his life. Man, wouldn't we all? Um, Hey, uh, thanks for talking to me about all this. No problem, honey. You might be new to the pack, but I trust you. Charlie will be home soon. I better get dinner ready. You're welcome to stick around if you'd like. Bell steps out of the scene. I paid attention to all of it, but I could never bring myself to write any of it down. I mean, it's not like normal people write down their conversations with their friends. And we were friends. We, we are friends? Bell's phone rings from inside their pocket. They pull it out, stare at the screen for a moment, then answer. Bell's boss is illuminated on the other half of the stage. Hello? How is the story coming along? It's, I, I don't, um, I think- How are you so articulate in writing? and so miserable to talk to over the phone. Spit it out, all right? I have another meeting in 20 minutes, and since you've been working mostly out of the office this past month, I need to make sure we're on track. I think I need an extension. Why? I, I, I know them as people, but none of them will talk about what it means to be a werewolf, how they became werewolves, etc. But you have concrete proof that they are and that this isn't some cult scam. I don't have time for cult scams. There are photos attached to the article. Isn't that enough? These are people in all walks of life. I I don't think it's fair to them to just post some expose with photos of one of them. If I'm going to write this piece, I want these people to be as human as possible. It's the rest of their lives. If? Sorry? You said if you're writing this piece. There is no if about this. This article is what we need for people to pay attention to our source specifically. Do you know how difficult it is to come across a story directly from the source before some big media conglomerate has already sent their thousands of dollars and resources to mine every bit of news they can from every corner of the earth? We're going to get ourselves on the map with this. You were sent in there anonymously for a reason. We don't want anyone else on this trail. Might I remind you that you are getting paid to do this? Things like this cost money. And if I'm not going to see payout because you might not write this story for us, then we need to renegotiate your contract. Our organization needs this story, Bell. I still don't know that you're telling, the tr- telling me the truth about these photographs. We need the hard evidence. This will be wonderful. Don't you understand? When you applied for this job, you told your interviewer you wanted to be on the edge of big stories, on the edge of truth. Is this not big enough for you? I misspoke. I will give you until the end of the month. Thank you. I won't let you down. 